everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You know, there's a mighty interesting story behind malted milk. The successful blending of rich, full cream milk, wheat, and malted barley, and a way of reducing it to powder form, was first discovered by Mr. William Horlick over 50 years ago. Today, Horlicks is universally used and recommended by physicians all over the world. Because of its digestibility and remarkable nourishing properties, it filled a great need and has been used by millions for infant feeding, for convalescence, for building health, both in homes and hospitals. Naturally, following the outstanding success of Horlicks, many imitations appeared, which cannot compare in quality or results with Horlicks the original. That is why, when you buy malted milk, it is in your interest to insist on Horlicks. Throughout all these years, Horlicks has been recognized as the one outstanding leader. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When we left Pine Ridge Friday, the disgruntled stockholders in the Great Western Silver Mine had become alarmed over the safety of their investments. And after holding a secret meeting, had threatened to take drastic measures against Lum and Squire Skimp unless their money is refunded. Since that time, Lum has been hiding in Abner's barn loft to avoid any violence on the part of the enraged stockholders. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Abner just entering the barn loft, bringing Lum his noonday meal. Listen. Hey, Lum! Lum, where are you? Oh, well, howdy, Abner. <laughs> I never knowed who you was. And then you hear me coming up the ladder? Yeah, but I wasn't sure who it was. Hey. You, you heard a holler and let me know who it is. I don't want to be burying myself up in that hay every few minutes. I'm fear this dust up here is going to bring on a catch of asthma anyway. Or uh, hay fever. Yeah, well, here I brought up some vittles for you. Well, good for you. Good. I thought maybe you'd forgot about me being up here. <laughs> and that blamed hunger that I had some salt and pepper, I'd uh, start eating up some of this hay. Well, Elizabeth said to tell you she was sort of ashamed of the meal, but this is wash day and she never had a chance to fix up a lot of stuff. Well, now, that's just all right. She oughtn't to go to any bother. Looks good what there is of it here. Er, uh, there's plenty of it, too, of course, if it's here. Turnip greens again, I see. Yeah, yeah, we had an awful good crop of them this year. And if I eat any more of them things, I'll have to spray myself to keep the cutworms off of them. <laughs> have you saw any of the stockholders today? Well, yeah, I've seen two or three of them down around Caleb Weehart's blacksmith shop. Uh, Still trying to find out where you and Squire have been to. <laughs> Ain't they located Squire yet? No, no. He went out the back door when they went over to his place after him fighting. He did or saw nothing of him since. Hmm. Some of them think that he went in there at the county seat and kept the train, just left the company. Yeah, that's what I ought to did, instead of hiding around a barn loft like a criminal. Well, I think it'll blow over in a few days, Mom. Most of them is true and awful, you know. All except Caleb. I believe he gets madder every day. Well, can't you explain to him that I never know nothing about the silver mine being a fake? You can't explain nothing to him. Every time he gets to talking to him about it, why, he gets so mad he can buy it. He's talking about it down there this morning. He got to pound in that anvil. You could have heard it four miles. Hmm. I believe I'd stay here for a few days longer. It wouldn't do for him and you to meet up with one another yet. Yeah, two dangerous men that way. Somebody might get hurt, that's right. I might get mad, too. Yeah, well, I wasn't thinking about Caleb so much as I was you, Lon. That's all right, Evan. Just let it go. Ain't no use to keep on talking about it. It just all goes to show it's a small world after all. Here today and gone tomorrow. Well, I don't know now, Lon. If it's me, I'd stay right here. Oh, yeah, that's what I aim to do. Oh, I, I thought you said you'd going to be gone tomorrow. I know. And I, oh, <laughs> no, I said that we're here today and gone tomorrow. That's just sort of the expression. I ain't going to leave this barn lost till I know it's all right. Well, you can't be here and gone both, Mom. If you're gone tomorrow, would you... I never meant it. I was sure not going to leave, though. Oh, you're, you're just going to make out like you're going to leave, huh? Just a fool of stockholder. <laughs> They'll think you're up here and you'll be gone. Of course not. They don't even know I'm up here. Huh? Oh, why, of course they don't. What's the matter with them, anyway? Oh, here, this grub will be getting cold here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and eat. Help yourself there, and there's worlds of plenty. No, no, I ain't old house for it. Come over, Lum. There's some hot cornbread under that napkin there, too. Yeah. Then <laughs> I bet I put on some weight eating all this cooking all these <laughs> Well, sir, I just can't get over them stockholders. Friends of mine turned again in this way. Ain't been more than a week now until they kicked Squire out and was begging me to take over the management of the company. Yeah, well, what there's some mad about, Lum? When that fellow Worthington's come in town here and offered a million dollars for the mine and Squire turned it down, why, 
It made them all believe in the mine stronger than ever, and they turned around and bought more stock in it. Yeah, I know they did. And when they found out the other day that Worthington was a fake, never had no million dollars to start with, and that squire just got him to come in here and do that so as to get everybody excited over the mine so they could sell more stock, why... Naturally, they thought you knowed about it, too, because you was president of the company and that you were just helping Squire beat them out of their money. Well, I never knowed it was a fake. I, I bought some more stock myself after, after he come over and made us that offer. Yeah, but the trouble is they don't know that now. I think i better explain that to them in this letter, too. Letter? Yeah, I'm writing a letter to all the stockholders trying to explain to them that I never had nothing to do with it. Well, it ain't exactly to the stockholders. I'm writing it to you, and I want to get you to, to get all the stockholders together and read it to them. Well, they can read, Lom. Or, most of them can. Yeah, but I had to write it to you. If I sent it through the mail, they'd know where it come from. I don't want them to know I'm still in town, even. You mean you want me to call a meeting and tell them it's a letter I got from you, huh? That's right, exactly. Well, what if they ask me where it come from? Well, I've got that took care of, yeah. See, right here, I've got, uh, somewheres in the USA. Yeah. That's the way the soldiers used to do. You know, Ike Blevins is so worried about that boy here. He was in the Army. Thought he got over there in them fern countries and got himself lost. Every letter he got from him, you know, he'd just say somewhere's in France. Yeah, but you know where you're at, huh? Well, so did Ike's boy. Well, he wasn't mixed up no silver mining business, too, was he? No, Abner, no. Well, if you know where he's at, why didn't Well, he... let it go. I want to read the rest of this letter to you. Huh. What I've got wrote here starts out, Dear Abner, huh. you are the only one I can turn to in my hour of distress. Ah. Well, it's already been three days. Well, they always just call it an hour, though. Yeah, you ought to say three days of distress. Uh. Don't try to find me, for I am thousands of miles away by this time. It don't seem right that a honest man like me would have to hide up in your barn loft like a criminal. Wait a minute here. That's got to come out of there. Huh? This barn loft's got to come out. The barn loft's got they to They might guess where I'm at. Oh, I thought you meant that. The pages of history is full of names of great men like me that has been put in dungeons and castles for things they never done. I want to say here that I am sorry the silver mine ain't doing so well, but it ain't my fault. If you will let me get out of this barn loft with... Well, I'll be that blamed if I didn't say it again. I'm going to have to write this letter over. Yeah, you forgot there and told them where you at again. I never forgot. I just... Here, I'll read the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. I am the very man to be at the head of the silver mining company. A man that's known fur and wide for his honest and upright dealings. A man with vision. A man... Uh, with... A man with what? Vision. B-I-Z-O-N. You mean a man that can see? A fellow with good eyesight? Vision, that I know what you said, but what is it? You mean to sit there and say you don't know what vision is? Well, I thought I did, but I reckon I don't. Well, if you're sure you don't, I believe I'll explain it to you. Vision is, uh... uh vision, that's what I said, my name. Vision. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Well, vision is, uh... Well, a fellow that sees things. And... Well, that's what I said. You said I was wrong. Well, what I meant to say it is, and it ain't. Well, uh, which? Mm, it ain't. That is to say... This is a man that can look into the future, Abner, and see what's going to happen long before it takes place. Oh, well, I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> Them uh, fortune-telling fellas. No, it ain't a fortune-teller. Well, they look into the future. I know one of them told me once that I was going to lose some money and, and charge me a dollar for telling it. Hmm. I could see then how I come in to know it. I'm talking about myself here, though. A man with vision. A man you can put dependence in. If you want to let me come before you and explain everything... Send word by Abner. He knows where I'm at and can get in touch with me in five minutes. Yours to it. Send me a pencil there and I'll find my name to it and make it legal. Well, well wait a minute, Sarah Lom. I believe you're overlooking something. You're, you're forgetting. I ain't overlooking a thing. I've been all morning writing this thing. I don't want you coming over here and telling me how to do it. I ain't forgot nothing. That's one thing I can say for myself without bragging on. I don't forget things. Sort of like an elephant in them respect. Never forget. You know what that's what you can do here. Why, you said you want to sign your name to that letter. Oh, yeah, sure. What letter? Why, the letter you wrote there to the stock Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did I do with that thing? Well, if I had it here just a minute ago. I know, you are reading it to me there just now. The trouble, you interrupted me there now. Well, ain't that it there in your hand, Lom? What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Never mind, Abner, I found it. I don't know what's the matter with me today, Harley. Well, maybe you better stop and eat them vittles, Lom. That's about what's the matter with you, Oh, well, I was wondering, I said... Plum forgot about them sitting there. 
I was wondering how come he'd be so hungry after just eating a big plate of grub that way. <laughs> well, I'll swap. <laughs> you forgot and thought you'd done at him, huh? I told you I don't forget. I just, well, I just got there studying about this letter. You better get on over and call a meeting before it's too late. Yeah, I'll call him up on a party line and tell him to meet me over at the schoolhouse line. Well, here, wait a minute. Don't put that letter back in the pocket and give it to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, why, tell him, uh, tell him, Abner. Uh... Huh? Never mind, I can't think of it. Go ahead, go yeah, ahead. Well, I'll see you after a while, Lum. Um. Don't forget now and step through that hay shoot again. All right, I'll watch. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, what was I do? Oh, yeah. Pass this to that. Oh. Yeah. I reckon we're just going in take a ride. <laughs> and if our memory serves this right, Lum also forgot to correct the letter where he told the stockholders he was hiding in Abner's barn loft. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word about Horlick Weight Control Plan. In a recent test of this popular weight control plan, 25 women in Chicago lost on an average more than three and a half pounds in three weeks. Here's what they did. They substituted a block of Horlick for their regular noonday meal. That constituted the entire weight control plan. By drinking Horlick this way, instead of a heavier meal, they cut down on their daily caloric intake with a consequent reduction in weight. Excess calories are a common cause of excess weight. And even more important than the effectiveness of the Horlick plan is its safety. Many of you must have read about the dangers to be found in radical reducing plans. Many are definitely dangerous and a menace to the public. If you really want to reduce, then do be sure and reduce safely. Follow the Horlick plan. Horlick's is a remarkably nourishing, sustaining, energy-giving food and is a safe, same substitute for heavy midday food. You can get Horlicks, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Bridges, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time. <laughs>